All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to run Valor. Um, I recently switched over from Wrath not too long ago. I've been running it for a few weeks, and I do have to say I'm pretty, pretty impressed. It's probably, hands down, one of the best bots out there currently. So um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. I'm going to start with these tabs up here. This release tab, um, you don't really need to be in here. They don't really update this. I'm not really sure why uh, last time they did was May 13th, um, but this was a pretty neat feature because you could essentially just create tasks directly from here. But again, uh, looks like they have not updated this or giving any attention to this whatsoever. So you can just ignore this. Next tab is analytics, uh, pretty self-explanatory. You can you know, see your uh, checkouts, um, tasks, uh, again, pretty self-explanatory. This is where your tasks are and your uh, task groups. Uh, we're going to get into task creation and the different site modules in a bit. So I'm just going through the top right now. Um, next tab is profiles. This is where your profiles go. Proxies. Um, this miscellaneous tab is pretty important. This is where you're going to find um, like automation stuff. As you can see, uh, Shopify monitor that's uh, for Shopify automations, um, Footsite monitor, same thing, and Nike monitor as well. You have some quick task settings. Uh, this is where you put your accounts. Um, yeah, so anything like setting wise, uh, it's going to be in the uh, miscellaneous tab. Uh, capture tab, pretty self-explanatory. This is where you're signing into your Gmails to open up a uh, Captcha harvester. You can also connect AOICD AI if you have it. And then in the settings tab, uh, the only thing that you really need to worry about here is uh, you definitely want to put in a webhook so you can get um, webhooks for your checkouts like this or when you know automations start stuff like that. If you don't know how to do this, um, actually I can show you real quick. What you want to do is essentially is make um, is make like a brand new server for yourself and then just hit edit channel on one of the channels within that server. Go to integrations, go to webhooks, just go ahead and hit new webhook. It's going to uh, give you like a spidey bot. You just copy that URL and that's what you uh, post in here. Okay, so now that I've gone through um, Going through the tabs, I want to talk about which sites you should be focusing on if you have Valor. Um, first and foremost is definitely going to be Shopify. It definitely has one of the best Shopify modules out there. Uh, I'm going to go over task creation for Shopify in a bit. Um, the next thing that you should be running Valor on 100% is Nike. I know with those um, Dan... Um, the filtering has been pretty high, um, but anything else you should definitely uh, be running Valor for as far as Nike sneakers go. And also you should be setting up for flow restocks. Again, I'm going to show you how to do all that uh, in a bit. Uh, the next site that you definitely want to uh, consider, they just added two new site modules. And again, we'll go over each one of those modules. Uh, Adidas confirmed for up and coming Yeezys. Um, it looks pretty good. We haven't had any Yeezys come up yet that, uh, you know, we can get some like real life uh, data from as far as like checkouts and how good Valor uh, performed. But just from reading the patch notes, I, I can tell it's a pretty, pretty stable uh, module and it should do well. The other thing that they added recently is end clothing. Um, I have personally not ran that site. I'm looking forward to it because uh, it's not, they, they do like raffles, but uh, Valor has a module for that as well. Another thing that is um, Valor is good on, I've noticed that the um, cancellation rate is pretty low and that is uh, JD and finish line. I actually checked out on JD Sports. It was those uh, polar blues um, and it stuck. So those are the sites that you want to uh, be focusing on. All right, let's do Shopify on Valor. So first thing that uh, you need to know about Shopify is every single one of your tasks that you create, if we're going for a pretty hype drop, there's going to be bot protection, which means there's going to be captchas. 
So before you even start your um, creating tasks for whatever Shopify site that you want, you have to make sure that you go over to the CAPTCHA tab and you have to sign into a, a Gmail into each one of these solvers. As far as the ratio goes, there's not really an exact amount. The way that I've always thought about it is the more is better. I usually run anywhere from 10 to 20 tasks on Shopify. Um, so, and I keep, keep five um, harvesters open. Again, you can play around. Uh, less would probably hurt you more because those Gmails will probably get wrecked too quickly. Um, but I would say five, if you could get a hold of five Gmails, um, that would be pretty, pretty decent. If you need a place to buy Gmails, just hit me up in the ticket and I'll, I'll send you a provider. But uh, very, very important before you even start your Shopify tasks or even create them, I definitely would have these harvesters open. Uh, you can hit open all and they'll open one of them or all of them, or you can uh, go ahead and select this blue box and it will uh, pop open, um, it will uh, pop that individual one open. Now, as far as solver type goes, um, if we're talking about Shopify, 99% uh, of the time you're gonna use Shopify checkpoint, right? So uh, every single one of your tasks is gonna have a checkpoint capture that you're gonna have to solve. Very few sites, uh, just one that I can think of off the top of my head is Kith. Kith actually uses Shopify Checkout, um, which you actually have the ability to get a one-click, meaning it will automatically solve itself if the Gmail is strong enough. Um, but just keep that in mind if you're going for specific sites. Most sites, the only thing that you're gonna have up is Shopify uh, Checkpoint. Not Again, going back to the CAPTCHA, 99% of the time these, these sites are gonna throw up um, bot protection, which is CAPTCHA, so you're gonna to need to make sure that you have your harvesters open in the background. Now, as far as task creation goes, you wanna make sure that you select the uh, correct task group over on the left. Um, you wanna select uh, your, your site. Uh, I'm just gonna select concepts. As far as mode goes, um, any time that the site releases Again, we know when the site releases, we know that they have, that they're gonna release the product and we know that they're gonna have bot protection. Uh, every single time you wanna use preload, this is the mode to go for whenever there is bot protection. Uh, what this mode does specifically is uh, when you start your tasks before the release, what the preload does is it actually takes another product from the site, adds it to cart and kind of holds it there. So right when the product releases that you actually want, what the bot will do, it will quickly switch the two things into the cart and then go ahead and just start to check out. Um, as far as profiles go, I know that um, a lot of people get kind of confused on this, so maybe uh, I'll take a minute to uh, talk about profiles for Shopify. Um, it's very, very difficult to jig on Shopify. You really can't. Uh, I have heard that some people are able to do it if they live in a house and they might do like floor one or floor two or apartment one or apartment two that might be able to work, um, but really you, you can't jig. But what you can do is run the same profile multiple times. So if I, I mentioned earlier, my go-to is like between 10 and 20 tasks, ideally I could have the same profile, the same card, the same info, fill out those 20 tasks. Now, am I gonna hit 20 pairs? Probably not. What most likely what will happen is I'll check out on one and the others will cancel, but there is no like uh, hurting you if you run the same profile multiple times. So like I run about five Shopify profiles. Uh, a lot of times I'll, I'll run those up two or three times on the same site. And as far as getting multiples are concerned, there isn't a very, there isn't a clear cut guide um, that says which sites allow multiples per card, but there have been, and I'm speaking from personal experience and then also just like being in this game for a long time, um, certain sites do allow you to check out multiple times on the same card um, and to the same address as well. Uh, just off of the top of my head, the Amaniri Jordan 4s, I, we were getting multiples to the same address. I think I hit twice on the same card. Another member, I think, hit like 15 of them all to the same address. So it really depends on 
the site because uh, you know the 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 site owners they're the ones that review the orders and if they don't care they don't care they'll just ship it out so it's really really site um, sp site specific and the more that you run these sites the more that you'll try to you, you'll start to uh, figure this out on your own so going on with the task uh, creation proxies now 99.99 percent of the time um, if we're going for a release the site will have proxy protection up uh, this means that your ISPs and your DCs that you use for like Nike sneakers are not going to work um, you need to use resis there are um, resis or clean uh, ISPs now there are a bunch of providers out there. Um, I'm a creature of habit, so like once I find one that works, I don't really change it unless like I need to. Um, my go-to for like literally the past two years for any proxy protection um, on Shopify is Live. Um, this was checked earlier. I just want to make sure that you have this unchecked. Uh, if you were making a task for um, a site at 10 a.m. This is kind of what it would look like. Um, this would be the same as if it was undefeated, if this was Kith, if this was um, Amineri, Social Status, Shop Nice Kicks, Exhibition, any one of those sites um, where you see in the release channel it says 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. release, this is the task creation that you're going to want. And of course, always make sure that you have your capture solvers um, up. So moving on, the next type of uh, password page, or I'm sorry, the next type of Shopify release that we'll bump into is a password page release. Now the setup for this is a little different, but it's also pretty similar. Um, first things first is um, capture solvers. Always make sure that they're up and open because uh, most of the time if there's a password page, they're gonna have bot protection um, because that in itself is like a form of bot protection, that password page. So always, always expect CAPTCHAs. Um, so once you have your CAPTCHA solvers open, uh, again, the monitor input will always be in the specific release channel. Um, the only difference is here uh, as far as setting up a normal Shopify release is you need to change the mode to normal. Um, normal mode is the mode that you wanna use when um, Normal mode is the mode that you want to use when there's password pages. As far as profiles, all of that is the same. Proxies, all of that's the same. Now, um, there's two kind of types of password page releases. So a password page is essentially um, the site is releasing, um, say, like a pair of Jordans at, at noon or 10 or whatever time it is, and they basically put up a password page, which is like a wall, preventing anyone from entering their site. You can do this manually when, when we know that there's a release, you'll see the password page. Essentially how it works is uh, when the drop time happens, they drop down that password page and it gives you access to the site. Um, most of the time, this is what your setup is gonna look like. You don't need to do anything. You can just go ahead and create your tasks and then you wanna start your tasks um, about 15 seconds before the release time. Um, now, there, are, there could be a chance where you have to input, instead of them just dropping that password page and giving people access to the site, sometimes what they'll do is they'll actually email a password um, in order to get into the site. If they do that, of course, we're gonna ping you, we're gonna notify you if that's happening, but the only difference in the task creation that you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna check off this enter password. And when you, you wanna make sure that all of your tasks that you create have this checked off. Now, what this is gonna do is, um, you know, say we pinged in, um, say we pinged in the release channel, you know, password came out early, we have the password or whatever. What you'll do is you'll go ahead and start all of your tasks and what will happen is uh, you'll get a little pop-up. Oh, I have to restart my bot. Fucking A, man. So, sorry about that. So, uh, once, you, uh, once you have all your tasks created, go ahead and hit start all. You're gonna get a, a pop-up that says waiting for password. So essentially, you go into the release channel, you copy the password, and you paste it, 
um, essentially the rest of your tasks will follow suit and they'll start to look for the product and check it. Important to note though, so uh, I just closed out of that box, the password page box. If you were to start your tasks like a little early, say you're just you know testing your proxies or you just wanna test the task to see if it works and that box pops up and you're not ready to input that password, if you close that box, that box is not gonna come back up if you restart your task. So I just wanna show you. See how it says waiting for password and that, that box didn't pop up. Uh, this actually happened to me and somebody else on the uh, born and raised drops. Um, if that happens, uh, you just need to restart your bot and the box will pop back up. So make sure that you don't uh, do that You know, uh, at drop time like I did, because uh, that's like an automatic L. Okay, the last type of Shopify release that you can expect to see is the domain change. Uh, this was you know, the born and raised not too long ago. This is definitely the hardest uh, type of Shopify release that there is. Uh, but don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to nail it every single time. Uh, first things first is, uh, you know, create your um, task group, make sure that you have your uh, capture harvesters open and go ahead and create task. So I, in my other Shopify video, I explained more in depth of what a domain change is, but essentially I'll just give you a quick rundown. Uh, the site will put up a password page, uh, very similar to a password page release, but the only difference is, is when they put down that password page, uh, there's going to be a link that redirects you to a completely different site, right? So if we were going for concepts and the lobster dunks, and they did this for the lobster dunks, right? So they have the password page up, the page um, comes down, it's drop time, there's a picture of the lobster dunk. You know, I click on it to you know go to the product page, and a whole new uh, browser window will pop up, and it's a completely different site. Uh, this is a bot protection method to try to throw us off, but you know we have um, ways around this. So essentially, what you want to do is uh, go into task creation, make sure you have the right task group, and for the site, uh, you're gonna hit. Shopify placeholder. Um, as far as your monitor input, it does not matter what you put in here because what you need to put in here when that password page drops is the actual product link. So it doesn't matter what you put in for monitor input. Mode, the mode for domain change is always super safe. That's the mode that you wanna use and you wanna uh, sizes. It doesn't really matter what size you put here also because um, Essentially how the release works is, hold on, let me just fill out the rest of this stuff. Now watch. Okay, so I have my Shopify placeholders. Um, if it's a domain change, essentially I'll be dropping the link in uh, release important. So this is kind of what your setup should look like. Um, it, it, it's gonna sound a lot easier than it is, but essentially um, you want to start all when uh, we have the link. So I'm gonna post the link. Actually, let me see if I can pull up the old born and raised. Yeah, so let's see, let's actually see if this works. So this is the old born and raised. So like I pinged this on drop day. So this is the link that you would wanna copy and you would put, want to put into your bot right here. And you can see another pop-up. So the second I paste this link, the browser is going to pop up. I have to select the size, right? So I'm going to select nine and a half. The product isn't live, so I can't add to cart, but there will be a button that says add to cart. Once you add the cart, this browser will close and whatever size I selected, the rest of my tasks are gonna follow suit. So if I selected that nine and a half, all of these tasks are gonna to attempt to check out a nine and a half. And of course, you're gonna to have to deal with captures, so always make sure that you have those in the background. 
and one other public. All right, that's pretty much it for uh, Shopify. Again, I have two Shopify, or Gump has a Shopify video, and I ha also have a Shopify video that really goes into a lot more depth and understanding, um, because essentially, Every single Shopify bot works exactly the same. The modes are the same. The setup is exactly the same. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to run uh, Nike. Uh, it's pretty easy. Um, essentially what you're gonna do is you're going to uh, paste your Nike accounts, uh, put them in here. You're gonna want the Nike account email to match your profile email. So if I have, um, 25 accounts, I'm going to have 25 profiles. Again, each one of these are going to be completely unique and different. Not a single one of these have uh, the same info. I have my address. My address is jigged. Um, again, we have video guides going over all of this in more detail. I'm just giving you a basic setup. Um, once you have your accounts and your profiles, I mean, task creation is super, super simple. Um, and it doesn't matter the release type, it's all the same. Okay, what you would do is you would grab a SKU from um, the release channel, make sure that the site is on Nike. Nike and sneakers are, are the same site type, so it doesn't matter if it's Nike desktop or sneakers app, you wanna select Nike. Uh, mode is always gonna be uh, default. Uh, you put in your SKU, uh, you can select your sizes. Um, profiles, you wanna select your Nike sneakers accounts and make sure, again, that your Nike sneakers account emails are the emails within your profiles because that's how the bot um, sets it up. And there's actually a um, option right here that says match email to profiles. You can select that or select all, it'll do it automatically. I wanna grab my uh, proxies. Um, this stuff, uh, I wouldn't check any of this uh, off. Brave browser, I would stay away from, and re-enter on fail, I would stay away from as well. So uh, that's pretty much it, hit 25. Um, again, if this is your first time uh, logging into these Nike accounts with your proxies, you're gonna have to have that email verification code. Um, Valor does have IMAP uh, to set that up. You wanna go to um, the miscellaneous and do IMAP settings and you just wanna plug in your info there. So if it's the first time setting up these accounts and you, um, I've already done it, so it's not gonna do it, um, but essentially uh, it's gonna auto fill in that code for you if you have the right IMAP info in and uh, if this is giving you any type of trouble with IMAP just feel free to hit me up on the uh, in the in a ticket or a DM and I'll, I'll help you out but essentially this is what your Nike tasks are doing I mean most of you guys have ran Nike so you know you know what's up with this um, the only thing that I want to mention as far as Nike goes while we're still talking about it is um, automations um, you know Valor uh, I would say that probably Mac, Mac and Kodai for Flow, Nike automations currently are doing a little bit better, but Valor, Valor will do really well. It, it really depends on like the stock, right? So if there's like a big stock restock, Valor is probably going to check out. So it's definitely worth setting up for automations for uh, Nike, and I'll show you how to do that real quick. Um, you just go back to the miscellaneous tab, Nike monitor. Um, I have it split up between um, adult and grade schools. Um, what I did here is instead of having one big list, so instead of having all of these shoes in one list, um, I, I, I split them up individually. I have heard this kind of like a long time ago that this is faster. Again, I haven't hit... Um, a Nike restock on Valor yet, so I'm still kind of testing things out. But um, essentially, all you do is you just throw in old SKUs and um, you just set up, uh, select whatever profiles you want. Oh, that's important to note. Uh, you don't need, on these flow restocks, you don't need to use accounts. 
Uh, it's actually preferred that you don't use your Nike accounts and you can just use regular profiles. So you can just make a bunch of, you know, privacy cards, capital Eno cards, um, and they don't care about jigging. You don't have to jig like crazy. You can just make a whole bunch of regular profiles and run those on Nike Restock. Um, another thing is task quantity. So um, make sure that you're making a good amount of tasks. So if I have 10 profiles, I don't want to run just 10. Actually, this this could be more. Um, really, you want to run like you know like 200 tasks plus, if not more. The more tasks, the better on um, on the restock. So don't be shy. Feel free to run it up. Just always make sure that you have enough proxies to do. It. All right, this is how you want to set up for Adidas Confirmed. Um, so once you have all your profiles and you have your accounts, uh, what you want to do is um, your site selection is going to be Confirmed US. Um, mode uh, to start will be default. If you want to check your orders, you can do that later, but just do default. The monitor input will be the SKU, which will be in the release channel. Sizes, obviously, you can select whatever you want. Your profiles, I know I have Nike sneakers here, but I don't have my um, Adidas accounts loaded in here yet. They're in Heha, but um, you wanna select your you know, Adidas uh, profiles. You wanna make sure that your account emails are in your Adidas profiles because we're gonna do the same thing with Nike. We're gonna match email to profile. Um, proxy wise, uh, I had uh, really good success with Lemon proxies. They're pretty cheap. Uh, you can actually get them in the proxy group by. Um, you definitely want to use Resis. Um, and I, honestly, you want to use Resis and ISPs. Use whatever you have um, because they, they have some pretty strict pro proxy protection and you might need to um, like start and restart or stop and restart some of your tasks if they're not going through. But um, essentially what the bot will do is if, if these are like fresh Adidas accounts and there's no, um, there's no info in the account already, then it's going to auto fill your info in that account if your accounts already have info in it, uh, then I definitely would select clear account info because you want your profile info to be the default account info for the Adidas accounts. Um, and then essentially um, starting, um, most of the time, you know, on Adidas confirmed it's a raffle, so you'll have time. Uh, depending on the release, you might have four hours to get your entries in all the way up to like a week to get your entries in. So it's not a like time sensitive, um, it's not a time sensitive, as time sensitive as say Shopify or Nike. So you do have some time to get set up for this. Yeah, so the last um, module I'm going to talk about is Finish Line and JD. It's pretty easy and pretty self-explanatory. The only thing is they tend to cancel orders a lot, but Valor is seemingly doing uh, pretty good as far as cancels go. Um, if you have Heha or Valor, I definitely would recommend running JD and Finish Line. Um, but as far as the monitor input, it is going to be um, the link. The link will be posted, of course, in the release channels or the um, you know release important. Um, as far as profiles go, you can run it up. You can run the same profiles multiple times. Um, you don't need accounts, and I would just use live. So you know if there was a dunk that uh, just popped up on the monitor. For JD and finish line and if I wanted to um, you know run it I would run up the profiles so if I have like hundreds of resis in my list I'm gonna run hundreds of tasks it's more of a numbers game as far as finish line and JD goes because you have to enter a, a, a queue and then exit the queue in order to um, check out one really important thing though with JD and uh, finish line is you're gonna have to switch the solver type. You need harvesters and you need to switch the solver type to JD and finish line. So let me close these, close all. Uh, JD group, um, some bots will say like JD finish line or sometimes they'll just say finish line. JD group is uh, what you want for Valor. Make sure that you have those checked. 
um, and make sure that they're open. These are not CAPTCHAs that you have to solve. It's using the V3, and this is how you check out. So it's just basically testing to see if you're a human, like right before you check out. Um, it's an invisible CAPTCHA and you don't need to solve, solve it, but you do need to have these open. Uh, one thing that I have, just an old piece of info from running JD and finish line, something that does help um, with your harvesters, not having a proxy and having it just be on local uh, tends to help out with uh, cancellations. So just keep that in mind. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for Valor. Um, if you guys have any questions or concerns, feel free to hit me up in the ticket, and hopefully um, this will help you guys get a better understanding of the bot and uh, get you cooking more.